Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com. Now when it comes to the world of peripherals, there is a huge host of kind of choices out there. You can go from anything to kind of your simplistic style keyboards, all the way up to kind of, you know, the more extreme stuff from the likes of Razer, Asus, Corsair. There's so many on the market that how do you really decide what you want? Now, when it comes to extreme gaming, then you may want to go for something that kind of can cater for those extreme needs. Maybe, you know, being waterproof, dustproof. And that's exactly what we've got today. Say hello to the Tough Gaming K7 from Asus. Let's take a look. Being part of the Tough Gaming lineup means that this keyboard is aimed specifically at people who are after kind of durability in their keyboard. This could be anything down from kind of esports gamers to even people who, you know, have kind of local LAN events and they know that they're going to be eating crisps and drinking, you know, Red Bull and basically making a pure mess over their keyboard. So that's exactly who this is aimed at. It also has some quite unique features on it, starting with those innovative optical mechanical switches. Move over Cherry MX, we've got something new here. Like I said, this has got an IP56 dust and water resistance rating, so it is going to be perfect no matter what gets thrown at it. They do state that it has up to double the lifespan of a regular keyboard, at least apparently. How true that is, I don't know. I mean, unless they've kind of been testing this for essentially the last 10 years, who knows? But I'm sure they do have some testing kind of to put the method behind the madness. Now, when it comes to the switch type, instead of going with Cherry MX switches, they've gone with the Opto mechanical switches. Now, this works in a slightly different way. So when you actually press a key, what it does is it breaks an infrared beam for basically near instant actuation. Now when comparing the response time of these switches compared to your typical mechanical switches, they generally come in at around five milliseconds, which isn't exactly high in the grand scheme of things. But when comparing to the switches on this keyboard, these come in at a stupidly fast 0.2 milliseconds. I guess for most people that's not gonna mean much, but if you are doing your kind of, you know, fast paced games and things like that, there may actually be some kind of competitive edge that this keyboard will give you. Now in terms of pricing, when it comes to a keyboard, obviously they do range in price from kind of your cheap Amazon, eBay type keyboards all the way up to the stupidly expensive like we see from the likes of Razer. This comes somewhere kind of in between, pretty much what you'd expect for a mechanical keyboard. In the UK, it comes in at £134.44, in Europe, €161.27, and in America, it comes in at $149.99. Now, other than the keyboard, inside we do get a quick start guide and also a wrist rest. Now, the wrist rest itself is very spongy and extremely comfortable to actually use. It uses a deep memory foam uh, material and does have magnets so that it snaps to the keyboard quite easily. As I did mention, it is quite spongy and it does have a really nice leverette effect to it. The keyboard itself is full size, but it does still feel quite compact due to the frameless design. It's very easy to kind of remove the keys and get to underneath them, just in case you need to dust them out. Now, while they do feel very quick and very light, like we'd expect from something like a Cherry MX Red or Brown, they are extremely clicky, like we'd expect, I guess, from a Cherry MX Blue Switch. In terms of the branding, there isn't a great deal on there. There is the Tough Gaming branding underneath, as well as in the top right of the keyboard. It does look quite slick as well, and it does say we've got your back. Now, you can also see in this area that the keyboard itself is weatherproofed, which adds to that IP56 rating. Now, the logo itself doesn't actually light up, but frankly, I don't feel that it needs to, purely because each individual key has its own individual LED. Other branding includes on the feet of the keyboard where it does say tough on one of them and gaming on the other. Yes, you're not going to see these, but you know, why not? Why not? Now the dimensions of the keyboard come in at 439 by 131 by 37 millimeters without the palm rest. The wrist rest itself is 439 by 77 by 18. In terms of the weight of this, it comes in at 794 grams for the keyboard and 194 grams for the palm rest. Now in the grand scheme of things, that's not actually that heavy. There's a lot kind of, you know, simpler keyboards on the market, which do come in a lot heavier. Now that's not to say that this is, isn't gonna be durable because it doesn't have extra weight to it, but I actually feel that it gives quite a nice balance between not being too heavy, but still feeling pretty solid. Now we did mention earlier that this keyboard is water and dust resistant, so it's gonna hold up to pretty much anything that you throw at it. Now it does mention in the specifications that this does have aircraft grade aluminium on the top. Now, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna call a little bit of bullshit here. 
essentially, as far as I know, all aluminium is aircraft grade. So maybe some marketing hype here, but I can kind of see why they've done it. Now this keyboard is all about durability. Now obviously there's no huge way of me testing short of rubbing it in the dirt, but the keycaps themselves do seem to kind of hold up against, you know, grease, grime, and it doesn't look like they're gonna sort of, you know, have any lasting effects when it comes to sort of fading and things like that, just purely because of the way that it's been designed. To assist with the waterproof uh, IP56 rating, the PCB itself is uh, nano coated. This basically prevents it from having the internal parts of the keyboard oxidizing over time if something does accidentally get leaked upon it. Now, one thing I would have liked to have seen on this keyboard is the cable. So yes, it has a pretty standard cable. It's not braided or anything like that. I don't know, I expected it to be braided. So when you think tough and you think durable, you expect maybe Kevlar or braiding or something to that fact, but no, it simply has, well, just a normal kind of cable. Bit disappointing, I've got to be honest. Now, one of the special modes on this keyboard is the fact that you can go between a linear style or tactile input. Now, this basically allows you to essentially change it up depending on your specific game style, something that I actually quite welcome with a keyboard of this price point. Now, when comparing against your kind of standard mechanical switches, they normally have an actuation point of at least two millimeters. This kind of new style of switches actually comes in at about 1.5 millimeter, so a lot less travel distance. As Zeus claim that this higher actuation point will make you feel like you're sweeping through games at warp speed. Now it is worth noting that with this keyboard there are two specific versions depending on the type of switch that you want. There's basically your linear style or there is your tactile input style. Now this all depends on exactly what you want from it. If you want something that does feel quite clicky, kind of gives you, you know, good feedback, then you may want to go down that route. But if you want something maybe a little bit more subtle, then you have that option. Think of it a bit like with Cherry, the choice of colours. In terms of customization, just like you'd expect with a keyboard of this caliber, you can map your macros on the fly. You can also use the Armory 2 software to adjust certain settings. You can store profiles on the onboard memory and much, much more. Obviously, you can also play around with the lighting profiles within the software as well, and also check up on your statistics to see exactly what keys you're pressing and how often. This could be especially beneficial if you're trying to sort of see where you're maybe going wrong in a game and why you're just not killing as, as much as you should be and well, why you keep getting killed yourself. Now, in terms of the lighting patterns, obviously it would be rude if we didn't show you exactly what they are. There's a whole host of them within the software, so let's check them out and see exactly how they look. Now on top of the standard lighting effects, there's actually other things you can do with this in terms of just taking that customization just one step further. You can actually separate parts of the keyboard up into different lighting areas. So for instance, you could have the arrow keys as a static blue, for instance. You could have the W, A, S, and D as a breathing green. FN keys could be waving along multicolored. There's so much you can do to really kind of, you know, give you full customization over this keyboard. Now, in terms of the LEDs themselves, these are slightly different, just the way that they've been designed. Instead of giving you kind of quite a large spread, they are individually smaller. So this means that maybe the lighting isn't as intense around the keys, but the keys themselves are a standard brightness. In terms of the typing experience, I feel that anyone who wants to use this keyboard for work or gaming will be satisfied with both areas. It can tilt ever so slightly up due to them feet, and the key placement is pretty much standard. It includes a number pad, function keys, and multimedia keys, much like you'd expect. The use of the macros obviously can assist you within your games or within your kind of work environment. 
and the overall feel of it is very, very nice. It's very light to type on and springs back very quick. It actually reminds me kind of like a combination of Cherry MX keys. It's, I guess, got the noise of the blue. It's got the kind of speed of the silver, but also gives you that kind of nice feedback and lightness that you'd expect from a red or even a brown. You know, watch out Cherry. They've definitely got something going on here. Now, in terms of the noise of the keyboard, let's check out exactly how that sounds. So as I mentioned earlier, price-wise, this is very competitive. In the UK, it comes in at 134.44. In Euros, it's 161.27. And in America, it's 149.99. Now, I actually feel that this is very, very good value for money. It feels good. It's a very durable keyboard and kind of gives you everything that you'd expect at this price point. The extra kind of macro uh, functionality, the switch between the multimedia keys and the function keys, the ability to kind of light up the whole keyboard or even just separate it out into various zones. Pretty much an all-round good solid keyboard. Yes, some people aren't going to like the kind of tough branding on it, but I actually feel that, I don't know, that's quite a good thing. Tough branding has been around for quite a few years with Azu, so you know that you're getting a tried and tested product that should last the test of time. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And let us know what you think about this new kind of style of video where you know, I'm not standing up in front of a load of boxes. It's more kind of, you know, just me in front of the camera. I'd love to know your feedback in the comments section below. Until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one. See you later. Bye bye. The logo itself doesn't light up, but frankly, I don't. Th 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 I was going to say think and then I was going to say feel and it just come out. Of th 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 these actually come in a slightly faster response time of 0.2 milliseconds just because of the way that the switches interact. Also, it's not slightly faster. It's <laughs> faster. I know. I know. <laughs> Stop laughing. It's just that word debounce. What the <laughs> f is debounce? I can't work in these conditions. I'm, I'm just going to turn around. Yeah, please do. Okay. Now, when it comes to mechanical switches that we have kind of... <laughs> hey, hey, is it just too tough? <laughs> Shut up. Such a douche. <laughs> Now, when comparing these Opto... <laughs> I can't do it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>